How much would your life change if you knew every single time someone told you a lie? Even if that someone was you. Lies like you're not good enough, you're not smart enough, you can't own a business, and you definitely will never make more than you did in your old corporate job. Get ready to be proactive, passionate, productive, and oh so profitable in a way you've never before experienced by opening your eyes to the big fat lies. Now, here's the host of Big Fat Lies, business coach, shaman and seer, Jennifer Kramer Lewis. Oh my goodness, you guys, can you believe it's Friday again and it's time for Big Fat Lies. Oh, I'm so glad you're here. I would love to invite you to a new place where you actually know what the big fat lies are that are stopping you from having the delicious experience that you came here to have on planet earth. I want to share the mindset tools with you. I want to share the emotional mastery tips with you to be able to surround you with the support strategy and systems necessary to take charge of your mind your emotions, and your energy so that you can command the luxury lifestyle that you came here to have and the money that you came here to have so that you can have the peace and abundance that you have been craving all this time. So today's big fat lie, oh my goodness. Before we get started with today's big fat lie, I'm gonna remind you if you're a regular listener, or even if this is the first time that you've listened to this show, please hit that notifications tab to be notified when another big fat lie goes live. And then also please set your alarm for every Friday at one o'clock Pacific, four o'clock Eastern Standard Time. We go live with another big fat lie. And today's lie is so freaking juicy. You are in the right place today if you're confused about what your clients and even your relationships want from you. You're in the right place today if you're currently restructuring your business or getting to hire or even let go of employees. You're in the right place today if you're getting the message now more than ever. It's time to stand up, show up and shine and profit in your life and in your business. So who's this for? Conscious spiritual female business owners who are working too hard and it's leaving them burned out and broken. And maybe you've even scared yourself with how fast your business is growing. Come in, sit down, get comfortable. You are welcome. And who's this not for? Unconscious people who are sure that energetic healing, shamanism, astrology, human design, gene keys, consciousness, coaching, facilitation, and mindset work is a con job move along. There's really nothing for you to see here. My love for making the complicated and heavy, fun and easy, maybe what you have been craving. So it might not be 10 easy steps to a million dollars today, but it's going to be something that you may be aware of that's showing up in your life and you haven't really had the words to be able to say, oh, well, this is something that's not working for me in my life. So imagine adding delight in a practical and pragmatic way into all your tasks, even the ones that usually drain you. In this week's episode, we go from hardworking servant to divine master. And it, while it might take a while to implement it, you do have a whole lifetime and maybe some subsequent lifetimes to switch into this vibration. And if you don't want to wait till next lifetime, I suggest that you join me live and participate in this show today. So you can hop on over to the Inspired Choices Network chat room, or you can grab the Inspired Choices app, whatever works for you. So why do I want to talk about being a servant? Why do I want to talk about being a servant? Isn't it good to serve people? Isn't it good to be helpful? You know, before you guys go all Rachel Hollis and rip me to shreds, it's wonderful to have generosity of spirit. And I want to say thank you to the people who are joining me in the chat room and participating live today. It really is amazing. I recommend that you have huge generosity of spirit. 
What I do not recommend is that you are using your generosity of spirit in a way that depletes you. You get that. I wonder if you already know about some places and spaces where you use your generosity of spirit in a way that depletes you. So think about that for yourself. So when I was planning this show, I've got a bunch of notes for you. So here's some of the things that we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about the spirit of helping and being a helper and how part of that works and a lot of it doesn't work. We're going to talk about generosity of spirit today, and we're going to talk about how your generosity of spirit is a gorgeous thing, and also how it may be like laying pearls before swine. You may be too generous with some parts of your life, with people who don't appreciate it, and you may be not generous enough with other parts of your life to the people who would really, really love it and really benefit from you being generous with them. And then we're talking about when doubt creeps in, the doubt cycle, like when fear comes up and you immediately want to fix things rather than checking into your fear and checking into your doubt and really asking some questions like, is this even real? Where does this come from? We're going to start talking about that. We're going to talk about enough. We're going to talk about enough. And so what is enough in this world? What is enough for you? What is enough for your body? What is enough for the people that you want to be of service to? We're going to talk about seeing what's possible, not what can happen. Do you guys get that? You know, like what is possible is a huge amount of things in every given situation but what can happen becomes more finite and why is it important for you as a business owner as a business owner and then we're going to talk about the new paradigm like hiring young people for your business they're really not interested in the come over here and we'll pay you that actually doesn't pique them. They're looking for interesting work that energizes them to make that makes them feel a part of the community. And so being paid for activities may some, you know, like your body might be aware of that paradigm. Your body might be moving over to this new paradigm where your work needs to be interesting and energizing. And then if we have any time left, we're going to talk about individuality and individualism and the right angle cross of the sleeping phoenix, which is coming in 2027 and the path of the observer and why you need to know about this as a business owner, as somebody who's providing a service. And, you know, even if you have products that you sell, the products are still providing a service. The transformation is the service. You guys get that, right? So, yes, I see in the audience, it's like, oh, this is going to be a loaded show. It certainly is going to be a loaded show today. So what do we want to start with? I want to start with the fact that you have come in with a very individual and very magic set of skills. So even the trauma, even the really crappy stuff that's happened to you in this lifetime is really important in your skill set. So when you kind of like I see a hand touching a burnt, you know, getting burnt on an element. So even the places where you've been burnt are really, really important to your ideal client, the person that you're providing services to, you know, the end user of your product that you've created, or, you know, just the, even what you do for a living, what you do for your life, what you do for fun, your unique set of circumstances that you have incarnated with and that you've had throughout this lifetime, however many years you've been on this planet. And then if you believe in, you know, shamanism, if you believe in previous lives, 
you know, we really do have a lot of other things that are installed on the hardware of our body that we have access to. Like, I wonder if you've ever noticed trying to do something, you're like, wow, this is freaking easy for me. Well, it's easy for you because you have had tons of lifetimes where you've gotten to hone the experience of being you. And so why do I want you to know about that? Well, I want you to know about that when you start to think about being a servant rather than being of service and being a master of what it is that you are here to be and do on this planet. And so a servant is an order taker, you know, so they're like waiting for you to give them a list of things that they need to do in any given day. Now, just let's talk about being a housekeeper. So say you go to people's houses and you make everything sparkle and they're super grateful for you, but they're not noticing the things that you keep noticing over and over again. Well, a servant would just keep doing that list and um, keep doing the tasks, whereas a master would be like, mm, I can see if they change this, 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 and this, then I wouldn't have to do this bigger task, I would have a smaller task. And then with that extra time, I could do some stuff that would really benefit the household, because maybe you get to see some things that are neglected. Now, imagine you are a therapist of some kind and your client keeps coming in with the same injury over and over again and you know so being a therapist who is a servant you would just run them through their regular protocol you would give them their massage you would give them their treatment you would you know do their nails or, or whatever it is you would give them their activity that they paid for now a master would notice a master would notice what it is that keeps being a reoccurring theme in their life you know the level of frustration that they have with their tasks now a master and this is how you get paid more would go and do research like if you've got three to five clients who all have the same thing going on at the same time and it's predictable then it's up to you as a master to go and find the information that is required to be able to help these people transcend you know so if they have neck pain then you're going to go and research neck neck pain you know from all these different angles you know physiological kinesthetic you know spiritual emotional you know think about all of these different ways that you can transcend from going from an order taker into a master and a master will always want to do a better job of what it is that they're doing regardless of whether they're you know making things sparkle in someone's home or they're, you know, an amazing pediatric neurological surgeon, they're going to be a master, and they're going to want to transcend what it is that they're doing. So if they notice, okay, well, here's some things that keep showing up. Here's the way that I can add elegance to this process. Here's the way that I can make sure that, you know, this very complicated thing happens in an elegant and replicable way. And that adds to the health of the client, that adds to the health of the, the workplace. Oh, my God, imagine opening up a baby's brain. Like, you will definitely need to be a master when you get there, but you will need to continue to be a master to stay there. You guys get it, you know, like upgrade, 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 upgrade. And so this is something that I really love. And I noticed this about myself is that I'm always willing to upgrade my services to my clients, my knowledge for my own life, and in willing to in willing to be that and do that, I have really attracted some really remarkable people to work with with but that wasn't always the case you guys it wasn't always the case I have had parts of my life where I was an order taker and I was bitter and angry and sad and I didn't really know what to do about it 
And so thinking about that for you guys, I really want to invite you to join me after the break. And I'm going to share a bit about my story about how I transcended being bitter and angry and sad and being a servant to people who could give a rat's ass about me. They didn't care about me at all. And I think you know, like the whole sphere of it, you guys need to know about this, so that you can get out of it. And so I'm going to invite you to join me after the break. You've been listening to Big Fat Lies on Inspired Choices Network. My name is Jennifer Kramer Lewis, and we'll see you after the break. Have you ever said to yourself, I knew I shouldn't do that? How did that feel? What did you make that mean about you? Business coach, shaman and seer, Jennifer Kramer Lewis, stands for you being deliciously ambitious, passionately productive, oh so profitable, and creating a life that is truly delightful in every area. Tune in to Big Fat Lies every Friday at 1 p.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Mountain, 3 p.m. Central, and 4 p.m. Eastern on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com to open your eyes to the big fat lies that are keeping business owners from being the bright shining beacons they came here to be. Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspired Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world knowing your voice matters and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspired Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. This is Big Fat Lies with business coach, shaman and seer, Jennifer Kramer Lewis. To participate in the program, join our live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com or send a question or comment to Jennifer at jennifercramerlewis.com. Oh my goodness, so we're back. In the first segment of the show, if you're just joining us, you're going to want to listen. I was talking about how generosity of spirit can come around to bite us in the butt. <laughs> and so I've always been really responsive and I've always been really responsible. And so, you know, like basically five minutes after I get a job, I figure out all the ways to do the job more efficiently. And then I usually get given a trainee or this is what happened in my you know in my younger years when I was in corporate so I would you know end up working in a job and they're like wow this chick really knows her stuff I wonder if she can train and then I would be given a trainee but I wouldn't be given you know like a huge raise that would go with the management aspect of having a trainee and so when we're talking about being a servant versus being of service and being a master, God, I've had so many years of my life where I was just so overworked and underappreciated. Like, gosh, I can just think of so many circumstances where I really wanted to be helpful and I really wanted to help and I was being super generous, but I was kind of overdoing it. And I was bitter because my overdoing was not appreciated. You know, I was frustrated. I was angry because my overdoing it wasn't appreciated at all. But I was overdoing it. And I didn't know I was overdoing it because I had these role models that were overdoing it in every area of their life. And so if you can just like pull back energetically and, and just notice your own body is one of the things that we're going to end up talking about in the body aspect. So right now we're talking about the mindset. We're going to talk about the mindset of a servant. And then in the next segment, we're going to talk about what happens in your body when you're doing that and some tips and tricks for your own body. But in this section, we're going to talk about the mindset of a master. But before we do that, we actually have to talk about the mindset of a servant. And so 
a servant in most cases is an order taker. They wait for the client to tell them what it is that they want from the service. So whatever the service is or the product, they wait for the client to inform them rather than noticing, wow, there's a bunch of frequencies going on. I wonder if because all of my clients have brought me this problem, I should create a product or a service about this problem. Or say you've got quite a simple job and you just notice that the same stuff keeps coming up over and over again. Like I remember when I was in property management, I had a whole protocol for how I ran the first meeting after an annual general meeting. I'm like, nope, this is my meeting. You guys can put stuff on the agenda, but I really need to have all of these things on my agenda. And, you know, because I knew what the problems would be that came up every time every year, every month, every week with running a strata corporation, which in Canada is the equivalent of a homeowner association. So condos, townhouses, residential and commercial, you know, so the same problems come up over and over again. And you have to grab the bull by the horns. You have to put those things in front of you and in front of the people that you're working for, the people that you're working with, it's really, really important for you to be proactive because servants aren't proactive. They're not. They're just like, oh, how did this thing happen again for the 25th time this week? <laughs> so there's nothing wrong with that. Even really noticing for yourself, you're like, God, I really let this stuff happen to me a lot rather than being a master. So maybe you're just noticing the mindset of a master is not what you have. The mindset of a master is not what you yet have. And so what needs to happen for you to step into those mastery places and spaces? Well, one, you have to notice the patterns of your life. You really do have to notice the patterns because you will have the same things happen almost every day and you will have the same things happen almost every week and definitely will have the same seasonal things happen every season and every year. And so a master will be like, okay, well, next season we need to get this, 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 and this done. You know, we need to offer new courses, we need to offer new classes, we need to offer new products, we need to offer new services. And so what are our clients asking for? What are the reoccurring problems that are happening in their lives? What can we predict? What do we already know? And what can we research? You know, you need to be able to be a detective. And I would say that that's one of the things that has served me in great stead in my business and in my life is that I'm such a detective. I'm like, hmm, I remember that piece of evidence from a week ago. And I remember these three pieces of evidence from a year ago. And I'm able to put the evidence together and almost become a forensic scientist about my own life and about the lives of my clients. And so think about that for yourself. Like, what is the master path here? What is the master mindset that I can be looking at here? And I think it's really, really important for you to be able to step into that place and space. Because if you're not doing that, your energy is just flying all over the freaking place. This is how burnout happens. You know, you are on track and then somebody asks you for something. So you run off and do that. And then somebody asks you for something and then you run off and do that. Like how many of you have that happen in your life? I remember years of my life where I was just basically playing ping pong, trying to help people. You know, somebody would push me in one direction and somebody would push me in another direction. And I didn't have any internal integrity because I wasn't willing to be the master. I wasn't willing to direct traffic. I wasn't willing to put the stuff on the agenda that needs to get put on the agenda, the conversations that need to be had with people, the expectations that need to be set. 
And, you know, regardless of whether you've been in relationship with these people for 40 years or 4,000 years, you can set new expectations of your relationship. Because I can feel you guys going, hmm, but what about my family? What about my kids? What about my husband? What about my clients, my ongoing clients? Well, you have to be willing to let them have their little hissy fit. When you start to set boundaries, when you start to be a master, when you start to direct the conversation and the flow, like almost like a maestro, you know, imagine, you know, Disney's Fantasia, right? Mickey Mouse directing energy. Because that's the thing. The, the non-renewable resources are your attention and your energy. I mean, there's a bunch of them, but this is what it boils down to. As a master, you are cognizant of what it is that you are directing your energy and your attention to. And so, you know, if you have FAQs with your clients, you could even make them a little video that shows how you do business. And then they have to actually acknowledge that they've watched the video, you know, because if you have clients that don't show up for their appointments, you know, people are naughty. People are so naughty or clients that don't pay like a bunch of different things, you know, think, thinking about that for yourself, like where have you been bleeding attention and bleeding energy? And is it that your gener generosity of spirit just really, really wants to help people, but you haven't stepped into the energy of the master? And we're going to talk about the, the actual physiological energy of the master and the servant in our next segment. But right now, we're just talking about mindset. And why do we need to know what our mindset is well where your attention goes your energy flows you guys know that so if you're paying attention to what's not working for you if you're bitter and frustrated and angry and disappointed and burnt the fuck out then you are in the servant shoes i can tell you without a word of a lie you are in servant shoes when you feel like that you are on the student path of your life you are a servant to your life rather than being a master. And so the master mindset, again, I'm going to remind you, a master needs to be a detective and notice the patterns that reoccur daily, weekly, monthly, yearly, seasonally. And the master always knows what the client is going to ask them for next. <laughs> They're like, oh, I totally know what this session's about. A master will know that. I totally know what the next services are that I want to offer these clients. And so it becomes easy because you are not in reaction. You are in response. You guys get that, right? The difference between a reaction and a response. And so you're not in the doubt cycle, the fear cycle. Like, ooh, if I set boundaries with these people, they might go away. Well, they might go away and new clients might come in that are really amazing, that want to pay you generously, that want to see you rise in your mastery of what it is that you're doing and being on this planet, which is super important. Like, we're not just here to pay taxes, watch Netflix and die, you know, or at least my ideal clients know that they're not here to do that. And so... It's so funny, like really the last mindset thing that I want to share with you when you're on the servant path is you will discover that nothing that you do is ever good enough. Like that's a really a reoccurring theme, a huge injurious, traumatic reoccurring theme that happens when you are ready to step into your master. It's not good enough for you. It's not good enough for them. It's not good enough to buy. It's not good enough to sell. It's just so strange. It's like something happens and there's this giant swirling toilet bowl of 
not good enough that comes over you when you're ready to step into the master path. And why does it happen? Well, it happens to make sure that you know that what can happen when you are a master is everything you do is way better than good enough. People can be super pleased with the level of service that you're providing, with the new products that you're providing, what your business does. But when you're in this swirling toilet bowl of never good enough, or not good enough, then you need to notice that there are places and spaces that are ready to step into the master path. But the big but is that you have to be energetically ready for it. And so in the next segment, we're going to talk about the energetic mastery, the emotions an emotional mastery that's really, really important for you to feel the energy and motion in your body so that you are ready to be the master. Because if you're an emotional shit show, it's never going to happen. So <laughs> I'm going to leave you with that. I'm going to invite you to join me after the break. You have been listening to Big Fat Lies on Inspired Choices Network. My name is Jennifer Kramer Lewis. Join me after the break. Have you ever said to yourself, I knew I shouldn't do that? How did that feel? What did you make that mean about you? Business coach, shaman and seer, Jennifer Kramer Lewis stands for you being deliciously ambitious, passionately productive, oh so profitable, and creating a life that is truly delightful in every area. Tune in to Big Fat Lies every Friday at 1 p.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Mountain, 3 p.m. Central, and 4 p.m. Eastern on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com to open your eyes to the big fat lies that are keeping business owners from being the bright shining beacons they came here to be. How wonderful would it be to carry your favorite Inspired Choices Network host with you throughout your day? Well, now you can. Inspired Choices Network now has its very own mobile app. Our free app offers live streaming shows along with thousands of podcasts and TV episodes. Our shows cover a wide variety of topics. Whether you're waking up with us, carrying us through the day, and taking us to bed with you, we're always here for you to enjoy. We're easy to find. Just search for Inspired Choices Network in the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. This is Big Fat Lies with business coach, shaman and seer, Jennifer Kramer Lewis. To participate in the program, join our live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com or send a question or comment to jennifer at jennifercramerlewis.com. Welcome back, you guys. I can't believe the show is half over already. It's just like whiplash fast. Today, we are talking about how to stop being a servant in your life and in your business and why. So if you just joined us halfway through, you're going to want to listen to the beginning of the show where I framed how being a servant is not actually allowing you to step onto your master path. And please do not confuse that with being of service. <laughs> Being of service is the most delicious thing that you can ever be. Being of service, helping people in a way that they are craving, in a way that they truly desire, helping them to do things that they can't do by themselves or they won't do by themselves. And they just need you. They need you, but they need you to be a master of what it is that you are doing. And so we talked about earlier in the show, a servant is an order taker. They wait for the list, they go do the tasks, they collect their paycheck and they go home. A master will notice elegance of process like, wow, where do we do this every week? Where do we do this every month? How can we do it better? How can I train myself to do it better? And they won't want you to pay them. They will be loving getting better at what it is that they're doing. 
So think about that for yourselves. There may be parts of your life where you are in the servant shoes, and there may be parts of your life where you really are in the master shoes. And it's all about generosity of spirit. And the more generosity of spirit that you have, the more that you know that if you nurture your clients and you are of service to them, you provide services and packages and products and your business is the culmination of you growing on your master path, well, then prosperity is inevitable. It's just inevitable. Clients are inevitable. If you're clear about what it is that you're doing and you're willing to step into the master shoes about what it is that you're doing, prosperity is inevitable. When I talk about being a servant, I always think of the energy of Carson from Downton Abbey. So I don't know if you're Downton Abbey fans, um, but Carson is the butler. And he's been the butler of Downton Abbey forever. And he actually grew up at Downton. He was a footman before he was a butler, I think. And so in the olden days, well, I'm sure there's people who are wealthy enough to have butlers now, but it's, it's basically the household manager who pays the bills, who makes sure everything's done on time to super high quality. And so that's being of service making sure everything's done on time to super high quality with a high level overview, a high level overview. And so when I think about being of service, like how can I have a high level overview of what it is that I'm doing? And, you know, how can I provide services to my clients, sessions and packages and products to my clients? Who else do I need to hire in order to be able to fully service my clients? Because I really love being of service. And, you know, in the previous section, we talked about how I got burned. I allowed myself to get burned over and over by being too generous and too helpful to people who weren't asking. And you probably know what that energy feels like in your body. Just notice like a time in your life where somebody was like overly helpful. And you're kind of you're like, well, why are you being so helpful? I haven't asked you to be helpful to me. I'm not interested in this type of service that you're trying to offer me. Uh, you're just kind of in my face. <laughs> so that's when you are doing generosity of spirit to your detriment. And so in this segment, we're going to talk about emotional mastery. I know I called it energetic mastery, but I really mean emotional mastery, because when you have emotional mastery, you can be aware of the emotions that are coming up. And then your mastery of them allows you not to react. You're like, oh, I really feel angry. What is that angry showing me? What is that frustration showing me? What is that disappointment or bitterness showing me? And you don't react to yourself even. Like, have you ever just like given yourself space? You're like, okay, I'm really not myself. You know what I do, you guys? I put myself to bed. I'm just like, okay, I'm not myself. I'm just going to have like a protein bar and a glass of um, or a cup of hot cashew milk. And I'm going to put myself to bed. You know, like if, if I'm no good to myself, then I can't be good for anyone else. And so think about that for yourself. A servant would show up and try to do the work mad, try to do the work frustrated, try to do the work angry, try to do the work disappointed or bitter. And everybody's been around somebody like that. Somebody who's like slamming cups and slamming doors and stomping around. And, you know, they're obviously in a snit and they need to put themselves to bed. They need to just go to their car and have a little nap because they're not doing what it is that they need to be doing in order to be able to be a master. <laughs> So think about that for yourself. Do you give yourself space to not react to how you're feeling? You're like, okay, 
I'm really feeling angry. I'm really feeling bitter. I'm really feeling frustrated. I'm really feeling disappointed. I'm really feeling like used, really feeling burnt out. Like when you start to respond to the feelings, then the feelings can dissipate. You just ask yourself, wow, I'm really feeling angry. What is that? What is it? Oh, well, I'm feeling uh, used. Cool. Okay. So is it I'm feeling used right now? Or is it another time of my life that this is matching the frequency of? So then I have this used and that used, and now it's like a big used. You know, because there's so many different places and spaces where we're reacting, but we're not reacting based on evidence or data. We're reacting clouded. You know, we're just like, oh, well, this reminds me of all the times where I've been used. Okay, but is it actual reality? And that's how you have the emotional mastery is just really a set of tools that you can start to learn. I mean, you can listen to a ton of a ton of these shows. You can start to work with me and really develop that part of your life where you have emotional mastery. You know, because I'm not going to let you get away with it, telling yourself horrible things about yourself, telling yourself, you know, that people are, you know, here to serve you or to be of service to you. You know, your your clients are actually here to be of service to you, believe it or not. <laughs> You have an emotional contract with them as much as they have an emotional contract with you. So this generosity of spirit can be used against you when you are being generous to people who don't deserve you. They don't deserve you. And so how will you know? You will have reoccurring anger, like rage, <laughs> Because the lie is that they love you, that they care about you, that they really are invested in your future. And, you know, this could be family, this could be clients, this could be an employer, this could be a contractor, this could be you were the contractor, you know, like everywhere it's anger is showing up. It, there's usually a big, big, big lie. And I want you to know that because it's super important for you to know what the frequency is. And anger is always a lie. It's always a freaking lie. There's a big juicy lie there. And so if you don't react to the anger, you're just like, wow, I'm really feeling angry. Okay, step one, do I need a rest? Yes or no? Yes. Okay, well, then I'm going to eat a protein bar. I'm going to drink some nice hot cashew milk and I'm going to put myself to sleep for an hour. And then if you wake up and you're still fucking mad, then there's something that you need to do about it. There's really something that you need to do about it, but not from a reaction, not from a reaction, from a response, a response. And so you think about, you know, poise, you think about poise is responding and being a hot mess is reacting. And in most cases, like I've done quite a bit of shows on your, um, Oh, what do I want to call it? I want to call it your strategy and your authority. And so if you have an emotional authority, you need to have a lot of space between stimulus and response so that you can collect yourself. So you're giving yourself the ability to collect yourself because you're never going to step into those master shoes if you are a hot mess all the time. You're never going to do it. <laughs> and so I wonder what giving yourself time between stimulus and response will do. Like just really, really, I wonder. Because, you know, when we move into these new frequencies, the right angle cross of the sleeping phoenix is all about individualism. So we're going to talk about that after the break, like individualism. And so previous, the, um, the planning, the cross of planning that we're in right now is all about the community. It's about the tribe. It's about taking care of the tribe. And so when we start to move into this individualism, 
everybody's going to be taking care of themselves. And so if you're still stuck in this programming, this tribal programming, where you're busy trying to take care of everybody and reacting and running around like a ping pong ball, and, you know, bouncing and bouncing and bouncing and letting people knock you off course, then what I'm going to talk about after the break is going to be really, really important to you, especially now, especially as we're ramping up towards this sleeping phoenix, this new frequency that's coming in. And why do I want you to have it? Well, you're the only person who has your own unique set of life experiences, your own unique set of skills. And so there's something called the science of differentiation. So your individual incarnation cross that you were born with, and you can find out what that is, you go to any web browser and type in human design free chart. And you can find out what your incarnation cross is. And so your incarnation cross informs us about what it is that you're actually here to be and do. And so if you don't fulfill that role, if you don't become a master of that role, then it just doesn't get filled. Like it's, it's like a tapestry, but there's holes in the tapestry because your thread didn't get sewn into the tapestry. And so it could be that you're here to do something very, very important. I would be hazarding a guess that your important thing is very, very important to especially your community, especially the people that you're here to serve or be of service to. And so we're going to talk about that after the break. Thank you so much for showing up today. I know there's a ton of things that you could be listening to, a ton of things that you could be doing on a Friday afternoon. If you're enjoying the show, I would absolutely love for you to set your alarm to meet us every Friday in the chat room. We have so much fun here. And join me after the break when I start to talk about individualism and why you need to know about it, especially as we're ramping up towards 2027. My name is Jennifer Kramer Lewis. You have been listening to Big Fat Lies on Inspired Choices Network. We'll see you after the break. Have you ever said to yourself, I knew I shouldn't do that? How did that feel? What did you make that mean about you? Business coach, shaman and seer, Jennifer Kramer Lewis stands for you being deliciously ambitious passionately productive, oh so profitable, and creating a life that is truly delightful in every area. Tune in to Big Fat Lies every Friday at 1 p.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Mountain, 3 p.m. Central, and 4 p.m. Eastern on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com to open your eyes to the big fat lies that are keeping business owners from being the bright shining beacons they came here to be. This is Big Fat Lies with business coach, shaman and seer, Jennifer Kramer Lewis. To participate in the program, join our live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com or send a question or comment to jennifer at jennifercramerlewis.com. Oh my goodness. What a cool conversation we've been having. So if you're just joining us, we're talking about having the energy of being a servant or being of service and stepping, stepping into the shoes of the master, stepping into the shoes of the master. And why is it super freaking important now more than ever, now more than ever, um, what I want to tell you about right now is I've noticed that there are a ton, a ton of female business owners that have really remarkable skill sets and really remarkable transformations and products and services that they're able to provide to their clients. However, they are really popcorning all over the place with what it is that they're doing. And, you know, they're not being linear. They're not being evidence-based. They're being emotional and, you know, galloping off in all directions with their life and with their business. And what it does is it makes it so people can't find you and pay you and it also puts you on the path to getting sick, getting overwhelmed, 
getting burnt out. And so I developed this system called the Overgiver Solution for a client of mine who was well on the path to being burnt out. And so I have an invitation for you to join me inside my group called the Joyful Entrepreneur Community on Facebook. So you can go to community.jennifercramerlewis.com. And on Monday at 10 o'clock Pacific, I'm going to have, no, not 10. Let's do it at 12. <laughs> at 12 o'clock Pacific. I have a free class that's available for you that I'm going to run you through the Overgiver Solution. So you can go to overgiversolution.com and grab the workbook and then meet me inside my group on Monday at 12 o'clock Pacific. And I'm going to run you through that Overgiver Solution because what I notice is that these amazing bright lights are burning themselves out over giving to the wrong people, over giving to people who really could care less. And it's so funny when I was in property management, I had an amazing friend and she cried every day in her office. Somebody would do something that made her feel horrible. And she cried every single day in her office. And like, it just made me feel so bad. I remember saying to her, like, look, why are you crying over people who wouldn't even show up in your funeral if you died? Like, it doesn't make sense to me. Why are you crying? And it was because she was so overwhelmed. She was reacting and she was ping-ponging all over the freaking place, being a servant, being an order taker instead of directing traffic in her business. And so I want that for you. I want you to be able to direct traffic in your life and in your business. And so that's what I'm going to invite you to on Monday at 12 o'clock Pacific. You can come and be live or you can watch the recording inside the community at community.jenniferkramerlewis.com. Uh, just join the group and meet us over there on Monday at 12 o'clock Pacific. And don't forget to grab your workbook at overgiversolution.com. And so I'm going to tell you a little bit about individualism as we head out into our weekend. So you as an individual, now there are people who are born with incarnation crosses where they're actually here to help people. So those are the left angle crosses. You're here to create a system or you're here to create a community, or you're here to help people. And then there are people with right angle crosses. So if you look up your chart and you have a right angle cross, you're actually here on a personal mission. You're here to do something for you. You're here to create something for you. And so if you're not taking advantage of this life's mission, this personal life's mission, and you're busy running around trying to be a servant, then you're not going to get to take your place in the tapestry. So I'm talking to you people with the right angle crosses right now. Your thread is not going to be in the tapestry if you're running around doing stuff for other people. It's just not. <laughs> And so you need to figure out a way to be in response to your life and create what lights you up. Yes. Can you get paid for what lights you up? Absolutely. You can. You can. And it's really important that you do. Like you think about people like, you know, Taylor Swift and Elton John and, you know, Tamara de Lempica and, you know, even Sigmund Freud and, you know, uh, Ian Miller, the famous show jumper, you know, those people got paid for what it is that they love. And so it's really, really important for you to have a life that you love. 
And I would say that that's probably the number one thing that I advocate for with my clients is helping them create a life that they love, that they're super switched on, and that the the day-to-day activities that they're doing, my detective is going to help them calibrate those day-to-day activities to make sure that they're personally profitable, they're spiritually profitable, they're financially profitable, they're emotionally profitable, they're physically profitable. Otherwise, what's the point? What is the point? (laughs) So as we head into the weekend, I thank you so much for listening. This is the Big Fat Live Show on the Inspired Choices Network. My name is Jennifer Cameron Lewis. We'll see you again next week. Thank you for listening to Big Fat Lies with business coach, shaman and seer, Jennifer Kramer Lewis. Join us next week at 1 p.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Mountain, 3 p.m. Central, and 4 p.m. Eastern on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Until next week, Jennifer invites you to laugh at limitation and live life delightfully by opening your eyes to the Big Fat Lies. Thank you for listening to Big Fat Lies with business coach, shaman and seer, Jennifer Kramer Lewis. Join us next week at 1 p.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Mountain, 3 p.m. Central and 4 p.m. Eastern on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Until next week, Jennifer invites you to laugh at limitation and live life delightfully by opening your eyes to the Big Fat Lies.